All right, so okay, that appears a little small, but. So link to the file plus master index. So file is here. And then master index. is the document right here, master index on the extruder and then on the spooler. So let's go through the extruder today and we won't worry about the spooler yet. So this is the big document of interest. So this looks pretty complete. The design rationale here is uh, let's talk about the basic parts we need. You need yourself, uh, and let me go to the FreeCAD file. What do you need to extrude some plastic? Well, okay, so there's, that's just a hopper. We can hide that. But that's good that hopper appears to be attached to this tube. But basically what you have is a is an auger in there. So you've got this chamber and closed chamber here. This is the motor. Uh, these parts here, that's the motor, that's the coupler, that's the shaft that attaches to the uh, to the auger. Uh, so the auger starts right here. Um, wait, that's a, that's a separate part from that. Okay, fine. So the auger goes into this heater heater element. There's a heater element here. There's a cooling fan here. Um, for a reality check in terms of how this thing looks physically, if we go to the Lyman filament extruder page on the wiki, there's a picture in a working document uh, just for reference on how this thing looks I mean that's some older iterations but the latest iteration would be let's see where is a good picture of this thing hanging on a wall I'm not seeing that nice picture. It's probably in the working this older this other no, it's not here. But yeah, I mean that's that's the thing we're looking at right here. Um just a small picture right there. But the idea there is what he has is um instead of the the configuration that we have right now, which is vertical, like he has this thing where he hangs it on a wall and therefore the hopper it just pretty much flows by gravity. And that's what he's doing right now. So he he's hanging it on the wall like that. And therefore, that hopper would be uh, bent at a right right angle. But um, we probably want to do that since he recommends that, and he's got good success with that. Because actually, gravity helps you 
um, helps with the flow of the molten plastic out of the machine and then into cooling. Okay, so we've got the auger, we've got this block here. Uh, I guess it's an insulator. Um, and let's see, Abe, Abe, are you on still? Or Okay, right. So let, going through the parts to like basically trying to see are we missing anything? So insulator, this is a metal flange. What are these washers here? Just washers. The square, the square brown pieces. Uh, I drew it. They're the phenolic material, which I believe uh. is maybe for to give it some compre some give to tighten down, you know, the bolts. The nuts on the bolt so I, I don't think it's so much an insulator because I mean the, the, I don't know maybe um, maybe the bolts go through there and it, it helps insulate it a little hmm. bit more but and uh, this the block MDF here is the main insulator, but the, the phenolic pieces are cut from a sheet of uh, material and you have to punch those or cut them and drill them out and all this stuff so yeah that's kind of a time-consuming things uh, but, but that was the option I was looking at for the washers and I, I'd have to say that the washers that I think you can buy from McMaster from a car are thinner and smaller than that material but you know the, the cost was a little higher but if you needed to stack them up and I'm not sure if he's trying to insulate that a little more or if it's more of a something to give it some compression some give in the in the uh, when you torque down the uh -huh. What are the McMaster car know, materials? Um, they're in the. Uh, I think they're all linked in the in the working document, uh, and the visual bomb uh, that would be on slide. Let's see. Right. So I'm looking McMaster car here. We got electrical insulating phenolic washer. A dollar each. That's a little expensive, but yeah. Okay, um, but that's yeah. fine. Um, we could we could there's, afford that. There's options. Um, that sheet material. There's options too. Um, if you know, I don't know how fast or what kind of methods. If you got to cut that stuff fast and punch holes in it. I mean, I know you have a variety of shop equipment. Um, somebody figure out a fast way to do that beforehand. And there's different prices on those sheet materials because. I mean, I was looking at it, they seem to be an eighth inch thick, whereas those washers are not, which I don't know how much you give or material you need there. Um, there are other materials I was looking at for insulating, uh, kind of like with the welding blanket, there's fiberglass, which is what the welding blanket is. You can mm -hmm. use different stuff, but uh, the phenolic material, there's different thermal ratings, I guess temperature ratings, and I think he said... I watched a lot more of his videos and other stuff on some of these extruders, and the way he talks about it in earlier versions of the extruders, that, that it, it doesn't seem to suggest that it gets so hot back there at the flange. Most of the time, I think he said you could basically touch it, almost. I would think it would get hot where you would want to, but yeah. that sounds like it's you know less than a couple hundred degrees back there, so I don't you know. It's yeah, less well. Thermal. Right, except I guess the thermal break would make sense because that's connected to the plastic. The bolts are conducting heat and they're connected to the inside of that chamber. So, yeah, you want a little insulation on them is what I would guess. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, because the bolt goes through the flange and some heat's going to radiate yeah. through there. But the nut, uh, if it was just in contact with the yeah. flange, that might conduct a bit more. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know if one of those thin washers would give it enough because uh, if it's thinner and there's just a washer there or two washers would cost a lot more, you know, so um, we had to have eight washers to make it thicker, but um, you know, one washer might be enough if we just buy the dollar washers, but they're I think they're I don't know what the temperature rating on those is, but should provide insulation. There's probably other ways we can figure out other materials that are cheaper. I don't know how you fiberglass would be kind of hard to put on there, especially if you 
punched it and cut it and all this stuff, it'd be hard to use some other material. Okay. This block here... I was looking at different options on that, so I mm. it would needs to be some kind of solid sheet material or the washers. Yeah. This part here, what is that made of? It's MDF. Okay. All right. And he's... Or, or a block of wood. Actually, I was looking at that too. He uses MDF on a bunch of these uh, for the platforms on some of the spooler. I guess that's the only MDF in the extruder. But MDF actually probably is stable other than humidity. But I think you could use scraps of wood. I saw some other video about an extruder and other people that do similar designs on these extruders and they were used on a block of oak or something. Yep. Uh, just for insulation there. Uh, so there's probably options other than MDF, but okay. I, I don't, MDF is the cheapest. It, it depends on whether you have blocks of wood. Okay. A lot of his stuff is, is based on, you know, what he had on hand. Yep. shop materials. The coupler for the motor, that's, um, is that easy to make? That's 3D printed? Or what is that? Yeah, it's plastic. Okay. Most couplers um, are plastic design. And there are, let's see, I, I think the extruder, I've been through that, the extruder, even though there's some discrepancies and things, and actually we're we're technically missing the spreadsheet for the bomb for the extruder period um just kind of odd that it wasn't on us nobody took that on which is probably okay because like you said we can go from the cad and create the bomb more thoroughly uh whereas the there is a bomb spreadsheet for the spooler because i think i think cassie copied it from the lyman pdf it's, you know it's not most up to date, I think, either that way. It was mostly copied, and uh, the visual bomb is and the index, the visual stuff is getting a lot more filled out, and I keep putting more links in there. But uh, we do, I guess, the next thing uh, after the CAD here is doing more part sourcing. It's on stuff on that in, uh, for the meeting in the meeting doc for next Tuesday. As I've got along, I've, I've up a few different questions for that but uh, the indexes aren't it's filled out uh, they don't have as much information uh, as links as, as the bomb should I figured that they'd, we want to put uh, most of the links for products we're seeing in the build materials sheets that way the the indexes aren't cluttered with all that information there they're mainly for the CAD links Mm -hmm. and I think the they're going through it I think the extruder is more clear and more a lot closer on the extruder the spooler a lot of the CAD is done I started to do certain CAD uh, more on the spooler too and I think some other people took that over but there are parts in there and from the diagrams for the spooler some things that are not as clear they're not labeled in the diagrams and it almost looks like there are parts that are probably deprecated. They're kind of shown in the PDF, but we don't even specifically. There are some gear parts that are used for uh, attached to the motors or where the wire, uh, the filament goes through. Uh, that, that he puts the uh, latex rubber uh, tubing on and that kind of stuff, and he replaced all that with duct tape apparently. And some of those I think were geared. It was a, a gear shape, and I think. They're no, that's no longer necessary. Uh, the only issue I saw was that there was a couple of STLs, STL 12 and 13. One of them is gear shaped and the other is just a smooth uh, tube. Uh, but one of them, I think the one to rotate the spool, uh, goes directly on the motor shaft, but it doesn't look like it has a, a D shape like you might want. Now maybe it fits tight enough, but I was wondering if we should actually modify that if it goes directly on the motor shaft if it had a different shape to it that might be better to prevent any kind of slipping okay and that you going you going on to the spooler course. maybe we should hold on hold on to that though so okay let's um let's just nail all the single parts here so 
so we know we're ready to build this and see if we have any any other questions that prevent us from doing something so we got the coupler it's 3d printed the shaft right after that where do we get is, is the any issues on sourcing the uh the auger that's clearly gettable I've, yeah i've found um let's see i was using the one that uh lyman uh used and i'm sure we can find some other sources but sometimes on those augers i was looking at other designs on these extruders and you do kind of have to be careful about the, the little specifications and, and shapes on the augers because they do need to fit through those uh the nipple pipe without much uh you know you, you don't want it brushing up and you have to cut that auger off to you know the end off at a certain length and sometimes the slight dimension variances on those augers usually the end is a little wider and that's why they cut it off the length uh, they do because the tip is usually what's 5 eighths and the rest of the the bit is a little smaller sometimes and I don't know the specs on his actually on the one I think we have shown it look it looks all the same but it's hard to tell from the photos uh, maybe Lyman's PDF photos are a little more visible but how wide is the hole so let's see so uh, that's the auger too or I think I heard other people say was that the, the nipple pipe that it goes through sometimes those have the steam on the inside can be a little rough and actually they like to go to the store and look through them and select them so that they don't have a significant seam inside uh, because sometimes you get ones that have they're a little rough inside apparently and that can be an issue if that's a problem then it's like you've got to polish it out hand which would be a huge annoyance uh -huh. so on those it probably be good to actually physically be able to go to a store and select them okay um is the motor coupled directly to the auger yeah right the motor yeah the motor goes through that plastic coupler to the auger to the auger so for example That's like when you're not supposed to touch actually is what he states i see okay that thing looks that's supposed to be five eighths inch there the auger yes okay so let's see it are we actually doing that here like all those sizes are correct 15 millimeters yeah i think so that's about right okay okay so the coupler it's kind of small it looks looks bigger like here it looks kind of big but it's pretty small. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm going to copy and paste it. So the hex is for... The auger. That thing has a hex on it? That thing is uh, a hex? hex sh sh Hank's shank, yeah. Sure is. Okay. Let's see what's this if we're printing this can we print it what's the size of this so we got 137 okay it's about the parts, six it, or at least in the pdf it says five. that the max size is is nine by seven and those those quad pieces um what well, i know it's two i was gonna ask the the 
let's see, I think that, that top part, some things he printed in multiple parts, even though he could print them as a whole piece because he said he had problems with warping. But I assume that his printers, previous printers, may have been less advanced than the modern ones. Like, maybe they didn't have heated beds. And if I understand correctly, some of those things help uh, reduce issues with warping and things like that. Plus, I kind of assume that a little bit of warping won't be a huge issue on that because, you know, it's, you just have to line up the bolt holes. And okay, so how do we print? Kind of That's nine inches. How do we print it? Our bed is the eight inches. Does the top piece can we print it in a couple of pieces or no? We'd have we'll have to. I mean, it's we can't do it. Okay. So. So. Yeah. The printers. I mean, we'll print it and glue it back together. Use this are all the smaller ones. Well, no, I mean the larger one, but the are larger one is only eight by eight. Huh. Wow. I mean, most printers are like an 8 by 8 inch surface. There's bigger ones, of course, there are 12. I mean, we can, hmm. I'm just thinking we'll just rip that in half and just print two of them. Print one at a time. And um, yeah. are the bolt holes in there in the bottom plastic or no? Yeah, the corners, uh, let's see, is that piece? I think, I think the corner pieces on the bottom with the bolt holes I think they're separate from the sides and he used to have the tabbed design but these all are designed to glue together mostly I think so the corners down there with the bolt holes which aren't I guess part of the top quad there um, they're probably let's see are they actually larger yeah, they. I mean, those would actually be larger in extent than the uh, the top faces. Though, so yeah, those are an issue for print size as well, I guess. So those parts could be hard to split. Um, what's going on here? So this this is split here, but you're not showing a split here. So this um, side here. Those large, actually, I thought that those had holes in them still. Maybe simple. Some of these, this must be the simple diagram uh, part. Because, uh, yeah, Two the three. sides on the newer parts actually have a bunch of holes in them. But the, probably for airflow, but this is a simplified model. So they're, they're pretty large. He was printing three of them on his printer. Sides, but well, he showed it printing three of the large side sections on his printer, which I assume was within a nine by seven. But that doesn't seem like that would be that doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, we gotta let's see. So, for example, for if we go to the master index, let's see, we've got um, extruder case. Um, so let's look at the extruder case, see how we can break it up. So this, there's one link, so all the case, where are all the other files for the extruder? Oh yeah, okay, here's the box. Case. Wait, so, okay. Let's see what this one is. Okay, this thing. Right, so we'll just have to split it into two or something like that. Yeah, he, um, that's, when I was talking about the one that was split in two, he mentioned there's, there is a version, there are parts that are split in two already, so we can do that. And he, he said that he had it split in two just because there was too much warping. 
uh, right. even though he can print it as a full part. So there are a couple of parts already, STLs, that we can just use for that. So, for example, for this, where do I find other parts? Uh, the part library, I think, is the most thorough. Some of those parts are moved into the deprecated section or the unsorted section, and we may need to move them back. I've been trying to clean that up. Let's see. Okay. The extruder, anyway. Um, let's see where it go. Is it closing? Okay, so there's the CAD file. Master index. Right. So what I wanted to go through, the ideal part would be, okay, let me see. Um, oh yeah, okay, so it's the part library. Yeah, reconcile the CAD file with the master index. So if we label every single part here, I was trying to go, go very granularly through whether we're missing anything. Like, maybe what we can do is when people are here, working just uh, maybe put a label to every single part in a master index right is that a good way to go because we've got altogether yeah, okay, 60 parts slide. or 50 I guess these ones can disappear edit yeah um, one thing I was thinking 56. of is I think some people have shown or described to me that there are some uh, I don't know if it's workbenches or methods of labeling things in FreeCAD. Yeah. Where you can draw labels in there, and I, I don't know if that's a good method, although we that's, kind of need. Yeah, I mean. In the, in the document as well, so. Yeah, you can. That's a good. That's probably um, not bad. Can somebody generate one of those, and we can put all the numbers, like 1 through 56? Uh, let's see who we got. Who can do it? Yeah, that would be nice. It, I think I had a, an email, uh, maybe that was Roberto, I think, suggested yeah, there's definitely. some method where you can have text yep. labels with uh, pointers to things in yeah. FreeCAD. I don't know what word which is. I didn't get to look at that too much. Yeah, Roberto, can you think you could pull that out? Uh, take the FreeCAD file for the film and extruder and then set it up for uh, all the part labels? Right. Um, so I was trying to do this by hand here, but we've got a better way in FreeCAD. We can. Can you take a basically a, an isometric, so we can label every single part using the FreeCAD built-in functionality for labeling instead of trying to label here. Does that make sense? The best outcome of this meeting would be to say that okay, we've got this entire design. And um, we went through every part, and we see it makes sense. Like, the master index correlates well with our final CAD file. Just to kind of make sense of every everything, that we have everything. Yeah, yeah. it also sounds like we're, we're going to have to have a little bit more than I thinking too if we're gonna have to break down um, the, some of the FreeCAD files of the STLs into smaller parts to print them 
Um, again, we're going to have to, I don't know, if we want a consistent numbering system, we're going to have to start, I guess, we need a number from the CAD. But if we have to break those parts down, uh, I guess a good place to start with that is in the CAD. And then we're going to have to, basically we have to make new parts that are small enough to print. Yeah, what I'm seeing right now is this. So, yeah. I guess the CAD is the place to start with that. And we're going to have to make new parts in the part library as well. And but you said that those already exist. Some of them. For that, for the one you're looking case. at, the, yeah, the extruder case that I exists. Put the, I put the links in the chat for the extruder case. It brings the, the, the hub parts. Let's take a look. That's one reason on the some of the discussion pages I was noting that I, I was thinking we really need to get measurements and extents and put some of that information into... Uh, on each part in the in the part library in the wiki, uh, so that we knew know what the actual extents of those are, because um, you have to go in and you have to measure each part. We didn't really put it in the descriptions when we uploaded them or anything like that. Which it's kind of like we need to go back and do that, or at least put it into the wiki uh, with each part, what the uh, dimensions are. For printing, and I know I know that in, in the uh, I was reading the PDF Morgan the other day. He talks about uh, the different print settings he used for printing some of these. Uh, the number of perimeters, I guess it is, in the infill uh, for certain parts, which I'm familiar with. But it'd probably be good to put notes about that in the wiki for the parts as well, if that's important. And. Some of that goes back into uh, questions, I think, was maybe comments, and you commented as well about the fasteners. I'm not that familiar with the 3D plastic printing, so I'm thinking of uh, changing some of the screw parts, and I'm wondering if people think that the plastic pads I see where you screw uh, some of the parts together, I'm thinking that maybe there's enough give in that printed plastic, especially if they have a certain percentage of infill that the screws aren't going to cause problems with it. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, people with some experience with the plastic more would like to comment on that. Well, I mean, just pre-drill it. If it, if it doesn't have the holes drilled, you pre-drill it. Is that an answer? Yeah, I guess we could modify it to put a little indentation there so the screw goes in easier, but the plastic screws they didn't have... Um, sharp points and I was kind of thinking of changing those to just cheaper screws because in a lot of this I don't see any reason to use all these um, nicer screws if we can avoid it I mean if you can just use cheap drywall screws or something but they're not they're not pan heads and in some cases you need like the, the right type of pan yeah I mean just simple ideal, simple screws a lot with of it is, is mm -hmm. Yeah, if we could use the same screws throughout, it would be nice. There might be uh, a few screws that need to be the right type, but for most of it, I think we could use generic drywall screws uh, on both of the uh, parts of the machine for the, for the extruder. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Are there holes in... Screws, my, my question is, are there holes typically in these things? Like, those holes are um, the ones of interest? I think there's some on the, extrude, on the extruder box there. You can see, I think, on the sides, there's some for putting in. Uh, and those are like a pointed, they have a pointed tip of the pen head screws. They're not really self-tapping, but you can't use any self-tapping. But some of the plastic screws that I had picked out... Um, you know they're not they're not self-tapping or pointed. I'm thinking of switching those two will be easier to screw into the plastic without having to make a either a dimple in the print, modify it, or pre-drill it. 
because it just takes too much time to pre-drill and or even to go in and modify the plastic you know put dimples or something to help with the uh the screw well can can we take the files as needed let's see like you know like those holes there well there's already those holes in there that's good yeah those holes on the sides of that are there what else um, is needed what it's, else it's for, mostly i think for screwing down the uh power supply and the relays oh, that. and the electronics like that they go on the face plate and when you look at those those four face plates which i guess have to be split into eight pieces now but um they they have some thicker pads and i assume that it would be okay to screw into those we just get the right type of screw uh if the plastic has enough give they should be okay and i don't kind of matter that much which type of screw we use for that uh-huh as long as yeah it yeah holds the plastic and the plastic has enough give because they they just have thicker um pad areas where the power supply and things like that sit uh to accommodate like a, a half inch screw I, I assume if the plastic you know the infill the way it looks to me uh that infill you know internally probably has enough give for the screw to go in without pre-drilling but i'm not i'm not sure yeah If Roberto, if if both of these have legs, how do you put them next to each other? The legs are in the way. Do you understand the, my point? Yeah. I was looking at some of his videos on how he did that last night, and I think that uh, those some of those things they 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 come off. They're temporary, or something like that. I I can't remember. Well, they're they're there for. Yeah. They're in the in the VFM you can see how how he did. Yeah, and I think I think when the videos described it to or maybe maybe it's the PDF. Can you link to the video? Can you can you show me the which video that is? I think it's the Lyman, the most recent. Okay, please post the link in that placeholder there I think it's the V6 video but it, it could be there might be an older video that has more information about that cuz some of the parts Five million people were have used my P90X business programs to lose even into his older and machine riff and they've had this V6 with spooler winder. Okay. Let me just see that again. So, you know where, what minute maybe? This, uh, am I looking at the right video? I've seen this one. I uh, don't. Yeah, I'm looking at it too. It, see, no, I mean I don't see it. How, how do you? Yeah, it must be a different. Roberto, uh, can you try to find that one? Because I mean, I would the way they are right now. I would just cut those legs off because they can't come to each other, and there's holes. Okay, so I mean, there's yeah, missing holes. Like, what is that? Is that just like gonna be glued down or something? I don't know. Um, okay, I'm let's take sure that to fit those two pieces together, he, he takes off those corner pads. Somehow. Well, I don't understand why they're there in the first place. Yeah, I'm trying to remember how. Okay. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to print the other part to go over that. No, no, it doesn't. Okay, uh, tell me about the four sections. Are we okay on those four sections of... Um, four sections of the case let's see so extruder assembly box enclosure okay top right 
top left, right bottom, face, side, small. So there's so many of those pieces, yeah? Let's see, do we have, um, okay, so this is where I, yeah, is, are these in a part library? Because, I mean, like from this index, yeah. we got to reconcile it. Okay, so part library. Okay, let's see if I find them in the part library. So, so electronics, big box enclosure and hopper. Um, Tension. Okay, so here, so they got to be in this big box enclosure and hopper. Um, don't see them. Are those it? I mean, the bottom four sections. Are those it? And then the sides? Yes, they are. Okay. So I, I need those. Uh, next to the bracket. Ah. Next to the fan bracket. A uh, fan yeah. bracket. Before, before the fan bracket. Like all this before, before this. Yes. Yes. Next. Part forty-one. Uh, the left one. Okay. Okay. So let's see if that makes sense. So. So there'll be. We're talking about part forty through fifty-two. Forty. Okay, what's the, um, are these numbers here supposed to be the same, like 40 through 52, as in a part library? No. Okay, so how do we reconcile that? Because, uh, so we've got, so it's like number 59, part 38, part 37... Wait, hold on a second. Why has it got 54 part 38? The first is a number and then the second is the name? Uh, that, that was the, uh, the name that uh, the original names of the STL files. Mm -hmm. Original STL files. Okay, how do we reconcile that with uh, this index? So, for example, what's, what's 40? Okay. So that's just the count. Okay, so if I want to identify the case, top right, top. Um, okay, how do I identify them here? Can you help me? Uh, I, I can put the links in the master index. Yeah. To each of those files. Okay. That will be good. And um, in the master index, since most people don't have 9-inch printers, for the ones that you just linked, these ones here, can you also put them in there? Yeah? Because these, these fit. You see they're, they're green, and I'm, I'm using the platform that I have. So this is Cura, and it fits for me. So that's good. Okay, so please do those. Um, let's see, let's keep going through this. So, once again, extruder barrel assembly. Let's look at the brass plug. Yeah, That's for, what... the, for the numbering as well, I guess the question is how many other parts are we going to have to split? Because then we have to start making our own new split parts in numbering those differently. Well, Roberto already had the split part, so I think he's going to put in the split parts, right? Sorry, I didn't 
care of you. Uh, I think the question is, do parts like, um, well, any of the parts that are part of the case, are they small enough to print on the 8-inch printers, or do we have to split them in two and print them and then glue them together after? No, I think the, all the parts, all the, all the original STO parts are ready to print in the 8-inch printer. Okay. So I know, let's see. Okay, other than the extruder case, um, the other one should fit, including, let's see, those longer sides with the holes in them, like 55 part 39 should fit in an 8 inch. Lyman said his were, or his max size was 9 by 7. Uh, actually, I assume that part 5539 and part 5438 are actually the same parts. I don't understand why there would be a difference. The ideal situation for me is if we, if like visually I can look at, I mean, yeah, we could do the free CAD thing, but here this is easy enough for me to, like, I'm, I'm you know, I'm just pasting one by one. Um, Okay, because I'm trying to just basically go through each click on uh, purchasing. So say I'm, I want to purchase it. I want to see if it all makes sense and if each of them fit together. I would like to request that anyone who is looking at this diagram here just do that like just break it down to link to every single part so that I can visually detect like like this drawing is good but like without knowing what every part is like I want to click on every little thing and then I say okay there's this brass plug okay is the thing that's after it does it fit well yeah it looks like it's this coupler so that plug fits into that coupler etc. So I just want to just review the whole thing. Now uh, that's why I can verify this this whole design. Okay, so we got the little coupler. Okay, that still makes sense. It's a little black piece of pipe. Four and a half inches.
For example, this washer, where does this, this washer go? I be able to tell that by the labeling within the the part part view right here washer half inch yeah, I think, um, five. yeah I see it that's good Okay, so I see all these washers here. Okay, there it is. There's a half inch washer there. There, there. Okay, so there's a bunch of half inch washers there. Uh huh. Yeah, that's for us buried in the middle. That's an actual bearing, like uh, it spins. Um, it's a. I think it's PTFE or something okay. like that. Plastic. Yeah. I think people are discussing some of the size discrepancies between the washers. I think what he says in the PDF is it's supposed to prevent, um, it's supposed to distance things so that certain things don't touch. Uh, I think the auger and the shaft are it's supposed to align some of that a certain way. Uh-huh. Let's see, so... Okay, what's the deal on those? That's the auger there already, right? What are we doing there? Um, yes, so... I understand the coupler but there has to be somewhere where that auger is that auger just free floating in there or is there a place second place that's holding it or is it right there is that what it is Okay, that should be in a in the picture here. So, so you're saying the MDF that I took off? Yeah, I believe that, that gray. Oh, so that's it. The, oh, okay, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. And that's a <laughs> made of what? It's bronze. Bronze, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's from McMaster Car. Is the the that I use from from Mr. Lyman and I, I think it has a uh, as I recall it's oil impregnated with something so that it uh, uh, will act as a type of bearing for the auger okay Okay, so my question is, 
Um, okay, there's that bearing, and that is what's holding. The one point of hold is at the coupler, and the second point of hold is that. Um, this is what prevents it from moving mo the shaft moving radially, correct? Yes, I think that limits the radial movement. I, I'm thinking that the washers move... Uh, what the washers are, I think they probably help prevent it from moving back when it's under... Uh, with them. Yeah, but how are those wash washers attached? They go. Well, I mean, they're tight. They, yeah, so they're a tight yeah. fit around the. Yeah, I think there's a point there. I think that's the wider point on the auger, and so the spacing uh, keeps it where he wants it to be. But yeah, that's right. The auger. Oh, okay. Auger changes thickness right there, and that prevents the auger from going into the coupler, or the other way around, or... Yes. Okay. Because the... It's supposed to be designed, I think, to sit, it says that the... The auger and the uh, motor shaft are, have a certain gap between them. Uh, and I assume the coupler is, is kind of designed with a space in between that way, but it it looks like it goes through, so well it has to the way it prints, I guess. The... Okay. So there's a thickening on the auger there and that prevents it the auger is prevented from going towards the motor, right? Yeah, by the okay. washers. Okay. And they're just uh, sitting there and kind of minding their own business. Okay. Perfect. So, all right. So I want to put a label to that one. So I want to find that. So that would be thrust bearing one half inch. Is that, that what it is? No, that's that's the other one. That's uh, thrust bearing, ultra low friction dry running thrust bearing. Yeah. That's the is it PTFE or yeah? Yeah, PTFE. PTFE. It, so it's Teflon. Yes. Um, I thought it was I guess in his pictures it was blue, that's what it was. Yeah, I think Teflon's melting point is extremely high, as I recall. Which is why it makes good high temperature bearings. Let's see. They say that some people print that using a 3D printer. And here it says it won't, you can't. <clears throat> yeah, I thought it was at least several hundred degrees uh, stable to several hundred degrees, which is also why it was used on pans. Right. Until the underlying polymer breaks down and then it <laughs> disintegrates. Here in this one article says they've successfully managed to print Teflon at 420 degrees. Oh, I don't know. Okay. 
save that for later. Okay, so that's that thrust bearing there. is that number item number maybe I should keep those numbers 14 So we space it so we get that auger to be at the right place. So they're assuming a very specific auger sourced from a specific place. Yeah. Yes, I think at one time he was using uh, a Bosch auger, but they can be a little different. So see, that one was sourced from, was it Oro? Because uh, they do have different profiles. Uh, I believe he has instructions to cut it off to a particular length, too. It needs to be uh, reasonably accurate, I think, on that cut. Okay. So, for verifying this, uh, you're in the CV press document right now. Do you yeah, want to make a, yeah. a separate document, or do we want to go and just verify it in the uh, visual index or add slides? Well, I'm doing that right now. Are you seeing my sc my screen? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing. I'm just adding a few slides in the front, and we can then separate it, but I was just working in there, so we don't have to spend time. Making another one, but I'm just lab putting all the labels in there to see if we got how we reconcile both of the 
um, master part index and a CAD and see if we see anything missing. Can anyone join us? Start pumping up all those numbers into that. Yes, but uh, I guess we want to keep the numbers, copying the numbers consistently from the uh, master index numbering in the master index. Yeah. Yeah. M4 nuts. Is that for the for the big M4s for holding the flange? See the some of the M. Let's see. I think it's M. Yeah, the M4s are used on the flange. I believe the M5s are on the motor. If I recall. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think there's M4s used somewhere else. Let's see how many. Yeah, because there's there's six M4s called for. 
so. Well, I thought that six washers. And I had six months, so. Okay. like I need to fix the numbers there. Let's see. Yeah, maybe we can paste into the document like here I have pasted on page two the CAD of the augers for any 3D printed parts or just the link to them. I'll just do the link. I want to make sure we have the links for everything sourcing whether it's a file or a purchase link.
See, M4 washers, that's at the flange. They go on the flange, four of them, and the other two uh, go on the other two M4 bolts, which are somewhere else I can't recall at the moment. Uh, don't look that up. Extruder. Extruder case. Okay. Oh. Let's see. And the fan bracket also. Okay, so when we. Oh, those are M4. Okay. Okay. M5 bolts go to the motor. Yeah, so. Sorry, M4 are just at the flange? Or, no? Yeah, the M4, four of those M4 go on the flange, and the other two it's in, go to the fan bracket. Uh huh. Actually, eight is, uh, are for the flange. Eight for the uh, flange, so they go on the right. one. Oh, the washers. Uh huh. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's see where if I can find them. It's that. Number twenty-six is the M4 washers. I see there. And on another side, right? Yes, right. Okay. I yeah. See that. There we go. That's very good. That makes sense. <laughs> 